The story, I suppose, comes from our what the heck are you thinking market department. I don't even know if that's a department that's going to stick, but I'm going to call this story that for right now. And boom, there's your headline. This is from thedailysheeple.com. By the way, I highly recommend The Daily Sheeple. I look at it just about every day, and I know at least one person who writes for The Daily Sheeple won't mention that person's name, but you know who you are. The headline here is, Family Refuses to Give Up Toddler Seat on Delta Flight and Are Threatened with Jail. That's right, jail and kids being taken. So this is this is the significant part of this article here. Brian and Brittany Shear of Huntington Beach, California, were on a red-eye flight on April 23rd from Maui to Los, to Los Angeles when they were told that they had to give one of their seats to another passenger. The ordeal began when the airline asked the family to give up a seat they had purchased that was occupied by their two-year-old Grayson. The airline wanted the family to carry him on their laps for the flight instead. After the Shears tried to refuse, explaining repeatedly and calmly that they purchased that seat and needed to use it, the airline staff made an outrageous threat. You have to give up the seat. Are you going to jail? Your wife is going to jail, and they'll take your kids from you. Despite feeling they were in the right, that threat was terrifying, Brittany Shear told ABC News. As a mother, you have a one-year-old and a two-year-old. It doesn't matter whether that's true or false. It put fear in me. Now, uh, some of the headlines you'll read is something along the line of alleged that he alleges that this happened. Well, folks, we're going to go and play just the beginning part of this video. And in the beginning of the part of this video, you're going to see, well, there's no alleged about it. Absolutely. Unless, of course, uh, George Lucas got a hold of this video and applied his magic Lucas special effects, whatever the heck that crap is called. CGI, CGI this. If he didn't CGI this, this is what it is. I'm gonna play it. So their policy is, if you're not gonna abide, you have to be off the plane. You have to be. Well, then they can, then they can remove me off the plane. You and your whole family. So then yeah, that's fine. Offense, and then you and your wife will be in jail, and your kids will be. Okay, that's, oh, okay. Yeah. So my kid, wait. So my wife, oh, we're gonna be in jail, and my wife, kids are gonna. Be I don't know. I, I think I should go back. Did you hear that? Let's just play that again here. I'll go back a little bit. You and your wife will be in jail and your kids will be in jail. Oh, okay. Oh. So my kid, wait. So my wife. Right. You and your whole family. So then yeah, that's fine. Offense, and then you and your wife will be in jail and your kids will be in jail. Okay, that's fine. Oh, okay. Oh. So my kid, wait. So my wife. Oh, we're going to be in jail and my wife, kids are going to be what? Your kids are going to be taken away from you. She's threatening to put him in jail. And take those kids and, well, take the kids away from the parents because he will not give up his seat. I'm going to play a little bit more. I bought that seat. Okay, I, I understand. It's from Mesa, right? It's here. Right. So right. I, I paid, for, I got him a ticket on another flight so that my son would have a seat. So and you're I, saying, and you're saying you're just going to, you're going to give that away to someone else that when I paid for that seat, that's not right. I understand, but I really don't give a crud. So you, need to, no, you need to do what's right. Yeah. I bought the seat, and you need to just leave us alone. So Mason's not here, so Mason cannot be the one that owns the seat. I, no, I paid for the seat. I bought the seat. You can, you can look and see. Mason, he's doesn't, he's, he's it's, my, it's my son. It's, it's on the way out, the flight was open, but even then it was difficult to have a lap child, so we decided to get him a ticket on an earlier flight so we can use his seat and put, and put the car seat and let the kids sleep, because it's a, it's a red eye. He won't sleep unless he's in his car seat. So otherwise he'd be sitting in my wife's lap, crawling all over the place, and it's not safe. So we decided to do it that way, and 
I have let him use his seat. I, I paid for the seat. This is what's ridiculous. Just... So, and before people say, well, you know, if you read the fine print, and uh, you know, this is, this is a private company, their private property, you got to honor their private property. Well, their private property is getting the government involved. That's one point. And the other point is whether it's legal, whether he signed a contract with details that none of us reads or not, whether this company is legally fine or not, what's happening here is not fine from a market perspective. If you want to treat your customers like this, if you want to continue a policy that says that if I buy a ticket and you oversell, that I have to leave, when you're the one who oversold, it's your freaking problem. Not mine. Your problem. The problem is that you have a policy that says that you're going to oversell. Now, if you can get away with that, if the market says, hey, we're willing to live with that, okay, that the market has spoken. I seriously doubt, though, as these stories start to emerge more and more, that the the market is going to be happy with that. And since there's more than one airline, some airline somewhere is going to take the opportunity to say, hey, and guess what? If you book your flight with us, we guarantee we won't kick you off. I want to go toward the end here. I want to, I want you to hear how, well, <laughs> the, the, the empathy and the understanding from this flight attendant who I got to tell you, if I owned this, this, this fine airline Delta, this flight attendant would not be a flight attendant anymore. You should, you should be nowhere near customer service ever again you should really think about going working on computers or something that you can work in the back room and not talk to anybody because that's definitely talking to people miss miss flight attendant ain't your thing what did you want to take did you want to get off by, on your own so wait you what are we what are we supposed to do once we're off this plane there it is not up to me and the rest is everybody well it should be off. you hear that what are we supposed to do? He has two children, a one-year-old and a two-year-old. And he's asking, what are we supposed to do? And she says, hey, my problem. Hey, man, listen, you bought a ticket. You signed the contract. The contract said if we oversell, we can kick one of you out. We're kicking your kid off. So, you know, you can stay and maybe let your kid go. You know, hey, that's the letter of the law. Or you can all leave. And good luck. It's not. At this point, you guys are on your own. At this point, you guys are on your own. We totally boned you. We screwed you. You know, you bought the ticket. You gave us your money. And we totally hosed you one end to the other. But it's not my problem, man. What about our bags? And this is... This is a. This, I'm. I'm. I'm not gonna play any more of this. I've, I've. I've played enough. This is. This is the just following orders mentality that you have here. Not only just follow orders, but go beyond and invent stuff to make it seem like you're talking with authority. This is the kind of person that you never want to have a gun policing other people even in a world where you have private security this woman is not the person that you want doing that job because she will she will officiously invent code to assure that she's the authority that she's the one controlling the situation even if it means threatening to take a man's children away from him in essence, you could argue, well, he, you know, in essence, because he wouldn't leave the plane. No, no, no. In essence, because this company overbooked a flight. And by the letter of the law, by that little contract that he signed, possibly, and I'm not even saying that that it's right. Maybe, maybe even by their own contract and bylaws, it's not right. But even if it is, what the, the, 
I don't know many people who could look at that and say, hey, it's a good business practice. This is how you should treat your customers. You would think that Delta was a government-run airline. If this was a government-run airline, I think everybody would like, yep. It's the way it's done, man. It's like DMV Airlines, <laughs> but it's not DMV Airlines. It's Delta Airlines, and I don't think this is going to end well with Delta. And you know, I, I know they they in the article it talked about uh, United Airlines dragging the dude off and bloodying him up. But I got to tell you, I mean that's that's not good. And he got physically messed up, but I actually think this is worse. This is worse. He's threatening a man's family. You are directly threatening a man's family and you're leaving that family high and dry. They, they explained in the video that, you know, it's, it's late at night. There's nowhere where for them to go. They got a one-year-old and a two-year-old. The, the next flight is not going to be until the morning. So overnight, what are they going to be sleeping on the airport floor? Yeah. I actually think this is worse than the, the United flights situation. Definitely. I understand the dude took a few blows and I'm not, I'm not advocating uh, anyone who hasn't directly harmed another person take, take a few blows. But, and I got to tell you, from my perspective, I would much rather take a few blows than deal with what this guy had to deal with.